Hey everyone, my name is Hughes, that's G-U-U-S, and today I'm giving you my thoughts on the New Balance Fuel Core MT590. Now, before doing this review, I wanted to go for one more run, just kind of figuring out the little details that I still wanted to pay attention to, and here is what that run looked like. My first ever trail running shoe and just in general having a trail running shoe is so much fun because you can actually actively get it dirty go right through those puddles and mud because of course if you have a road running shoe like this one for instance the 880 by New Balance my everyday trainer more or less you're always even if you run in the forest you're always going to avoid the puddles and stuff because you don't want to get it too dirty but with a shoe like this you can just go straight through it, nobody cares. So let's talk about this shoe, the New Balance MT590. Now I have to point out that it's very difficult to find exact specs about this shoe. So most of the specs will be specific for my size, which is a size 42 European, an 8.5 US or a size 8 UK. So what I do know about this shoe and what I did find on the internet is that it has an eight millimeter drop from heel to toe. The stack height I couldn't find so I did some measuring myself and I think it's about 15 millimeter in the forefoot which would make it 23 millimeter <clears throat> in the heel. So it's a very low stack height and you're definitely also feeling that but we'll get back to that when we're talking about the actual midsole um, as well as the outsole. A neutral running shoe especially in the forefoot the heel is a little more sturdy but the forefoot goes everywhere so if you need a little more stability this is not really a shoe for you. Then for the weight it's 229 grams and this is what I measured myself after using it. It did dry up so there was no uh, moisture left inside the shoe but the weight after using it so subtract a couple of grams if you want the weight without using it but you're gonna use a running shoe so why not know the weight uh, while you're using it. Then there's some really nice colorways of this shoe. Now they're starting to sell out and I don't think they're getting new shoes in but there's a lot of choice and hopefully you can find a nice colorway for yourself. I decided to go with this blue and orange because it stands out and it's kind of nice to get this color shoe this dirty so I'm uh, very glad that I chose for this colorway. And then finally we have the price and let me put the shoe to the side for this because this shoe costs well it's constantly on sale like permanently on sale pretty much everywhere and it costs 40 euros that's 35 pounds and 46 dollars i think more or less it's so cheap and this is definitely something to consider it's a cheap uh, trail running shoe and i will also take this into account when uh, giving it my final score towards the end but 40 euros? Are you kidding me? So now let's dive a little bit deeper into this shoe, right? Let's build it from the top to the bottom because that's how you build things. Oh wait, um, well I'm gonna start at the top anyways. So around the heel I didn't notice any chafing or anything. So we have quite some padding around the actual uh, collar. We do have a little bit of a, a plush tongue, but nothing too thick and crazy. And then the rest of the upper is relatively uh, thin itself, really, really breathable. But even now in the winter, when it's close to freezing temperatures, I didn't get cold feet at all because you're running and well, you won't get cold feet uh, if you're running and of course you can always wear thicker socks if you do tend to get cold feet but in the summer I especially appreciated the ventilation through this upper. You can see it has a little bit of a retro style with these uh, kind of plastic parts on top and it also helps to prevent ripping and stuff like that. Overall I think it looks quite nice. 
What I did notice with this upper is that there's a little bit of uh, scrunching in the toe box. And then I should also point out that the laces in this shoe are crazy long. So I always felt that I had to double tie them in order to make sure that I wouldn't be running on them, even if they were tied just once. Finally, for the upper, we have a little bit of a pull tab. So if you want to hang your shoes, <laughs> I guess you could. I barely use pull tabs, but I know some people really like them to get their shoes on. So, uh, well, it's right there. The toe box in the front, uh, I should talk about. It's not uh, super wide, but it's a little bit wide. So your feet do get to splay out a little bit. That might also be why I get some scrunching. So if you have wide feet, Maybe it might work for you and you might not actually experience the scrunching in the forefoot. Let's move on to the midsole and that is the Ref Light midsole material from New Balance. It's a very dense material like let me show you here if I try to push it like it's really not moving a lot. It's dense. They say it's responsive. I didn't really notice that myself um, too too much. And definitely with this material and the low stack height, you get a ground contact feel, especially on the roads, but um, on the trails also, you definitely feel the impact of your foot on the surface. Now, as a track athlete, I don't run long distances in most shoes and um, I'm used to having more impact from the track and also from running intervals on the road. So personally, I really don't mind the ground contact feel uh, too, too much. But if you are somebody who likes to go long distances, I would say more than 15 kilometers. So that would be more than 10 miles more or less. Then maybe this shoe isn't that good for you. I think New Balance has some other budget options um, that might be better for that. So be sure to Google for that and uh, maybe you'll find something. But if you want to go long distances, this might not be the shoe. I do think it works really well. Um, for doing intervals in the forest. Just if you want that little extra grip, if you are a track athlete, but you want to do some intervals and hills in the forest, then this is uh, quite nice. And that automatically brings us to the outsole, of course, if we're talking about grip. This is what New Balance calls the AT Thread outsole. So it's a mixture between a road shoe and a trail shoe. And that's definitely something I noticed. Like, the run I did yesterday, it was about 60% road, 40% trail, but the trails were quite technical and quite muddy, as you might have seen uh, in some of the videos. And it worked perfectly on the road as well. So it will give you some grip on the trails, um, more than nothing and more than, of course, a normal road shoe or everyday trainer. The lug depth, I think it's about three, four millimeters, so it's nothing crazy, but it's given gonna give you that little extra um, that you need on a lot of trails. Now, I did slip around a little bit yesterday during my run on mud as well as on some wet stones, so you're not getting super crazy grip um, <laughs> with this shoe. But of course, if it's too muddy at some point, you're really not gonna get too much grip with any shoe. And the same is for wet rocks. If it's too wet, you're gonna slip anyway. So it really doesn't matter what shoe you're wearing uh, at that point. But it's definitely not a, a mud claw or something like that. It's a really basic... Um, commuter shoes so you can run on the road to the forest uh, do your lap there and then run back and it's gonna feel perfectly fine if you like a ground contact feel so who do I think this shoe is for I kind of talked about it already the track athlete who wants to do some intervals in the forest um, maybe you want to do some hill training and you find yourself losing grip with your normal shoes, then this shoe might be a really nice option for that as well. Maybe it's a good budget option for those people who don't run too much, but want a specific shoe to get dirty in the forest. I think it's really good for that um, as well. But don't run more than, I think, 15 kilometers, 10 miles more or less on these shoes because then your feet might start hurting because of the uh, impact, the ground contact feel that this shoe has. So in that case, you might want to look for some other trail shoe. I know there are a bunch of budget options out there. And of course, if you want to spend a little more, there's even more options for you out there. 
So my final score for this shoe, taking everything into account. So uh, the weight, the price, the weight is really good combined with the price. That's crazy uh, to me, to be honest. Um, the ride, I personally really like. So I'm gonna give this shoe a 76 out of 100. That's what this shoe gets from me. I really enjoy it and I hope you also enjoy it in case uh, you think about picking it up yourself. If you do, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any more questions, also let me know in the comments down below. If you thought this video was helpful, consider liking below this video, also down below. <laughs> If you like running or technology videos are ideally a combination of the two, then uh, be sure to stick around because I will be uploading more and more and exactly that uh, content. So it's your lucky day if you're into those two things. But that's really everything I wanted to talk about today. You just keep on rolling and you'll see me again in the next one. Bye-bye.